Richard, always a pleasure to have you. Uh, and I want to start off on that increasing scarcity, sort of reading you from the conference call. Increasing scarcity in supply at a time when demand is growing so significantly, limited number of projects, which have been under development for some time. But when you look beyond that, you said it's hard to find actionable projects that are or can be developed within a very short period of time. Are we going to have a shortage of copper? David, I think we are heading for a shortage for copper, copper absent some black swan economic event. The uh, uses of copper in the world today are, are growing. I talk about a new era of copper demand beyond just its general uses in the economy and in developing countries, China and other places. But with this movement towards carbon reduction investments, every one of those investments requires more copper. And then just connectivity uh, with infrastructure development, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the uses of copper are growing. Uh, it, as I said, I, I believe it's a new era. And some of the supply challenges are getting even to be more acute. Yeah, uh, you obviously indicated that the last time we spoke to you, I think it was last spring. Um, you know, like a, a big oil company, you operate around the world in some areas that have a lot of political instability. And I noted as well your comments on the call where you said Chile and Peru, 40 percent, by the way, of the world's copper come from those two countries. There are new presidents who run on agendas that are oriented towards social programs that require more revenues to implement. So how are you going to deal with that? Well, from our company standpoint, we have a major attractive development project in Chile. It's called El Abra, where we're partners with Cadelco, that we're actually putting on hold now until we see how the reconsideration of the fiscal requirements for the copper industry uh, pan out in this, this new issues. That's just one example. It's clearly uh, issues that are going to affect uh, uh, project development. It, it's going to have an impact on production in some cases. It's, and, and, and those countries are so significant, but it's true all around the world. I mean, even though the world needs more copper, in some ways, the challenges in working with governments and communities to get projects approved are growing. We benefit the U.S. because we're, our growth will come from existing projects, which are a lot easier. But country after country is deferring, delaying, or canceling projects. Right. But all that being said, you, you do have at, more, at 250 uh, for copper more than what you say is a 25-year reserve life of proved and provable reserves. 25 years is a pretty long time. David, I, I couldn't be more pleased about where Freeport is positioned right now. As you know, after years of, of really significant challenges, but we've got our balance sheet. We're, we, we've been rated as investment grade by two agencies. Our debt is de minimis after that being a huge problem for us in the past. Uh, we've completed the ramp up, and this was a major multi-year, multi-billion dollar project to convert our big mine in Indonesia to an underground mine at a scale that's never been done in the mining industry. And David, last quarter, that mine produced copper at a net cash cost of eight cents a pound when the price of copper was approaching $4.50. So I love where our company is, is, is placed for a commodity that will be scarce, and we have the chance to grow because of our reserve and resource position that you just referenced. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.